Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing three quick and easy ways to use cover plate dies. And I've created a trio of holiday cards that took me only 5, 10, and 15 minutes to put together. So let's get started. I'm using the Twirling Flurries and Birch Tree cover plate dies from Ellen Hudson for my cards today. Both dies are available now and are must-haves for your craft stash. The Twirling Flurries cover plate die cuts an intricate stitch design on your cardstock, as well as tiny holes that could be stars or snowflakes. The Birch Tree cover plate die cuts a fantastic scene that could be used for any season or occasion. I also love that neither die has an outside border, so they can be easily used for different sized cards or even repeated to cover a larger card base. So my first card literally took me 4 minutes and 45 seconds to create, and the bulk of that time was actually applying adhesive. This would be an elegant Christmas card that you could easily mass produce with a big die cutting session. I die cut both cover plate dies with white cardstock for a monochrome design. Then I die cut the Dear Couple from gold and silver glitter cardstock for a little bit of sparkle. Next I line up two sentiments from Love and Light onto my Misty to stamp on the bottom of the birch tree cover plate die. I have one sentiment on the left side of my Misty and the other on the right, so that I can save time which is a great trick for mass producing. I stamp the first sentiment with embossing ink and heat emboss it with gold embossing powder. Then I place the panel back in my Misty, stamp the other sentiment with embossing ink and heat emboss it with silver embossing powder. Then it was just a matter of adhering it all together. I used score tape and HG adhesive for these cards so that I can easily add adhesive to the thinner areas, but you could also use liquid adhesive to speed things up. I love the little touches of gold and silver in the deer and the sentiment, and also the great detail in the white areas. And that card couldn't be simpler to put together. I spend most of my time on the second card adhering things again. It's another simple design, but one that I think makes a big statement and is a fantastic way to use up your scraps. I chose an autumn palette of warm golds, oranges, and purples and cut some cardstock scraps down into strips in a variety of widths. You can make them all even, but I think the variety makes the result even more interesting. I add adhesive to the card base and then add each strip of cardstock to the panel, making sure they're lined up exactly. Then I trim off the excess that's overhanging on the sides. You can find another set of cards I made recently using cardstock scraps by clicking the link above. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I die cut another birch tree cover plate die, this time using black cardstock. I place it in my Misty and stamp a sentiment from Tis the Season with embossing ink and heat emboss it with gold embossing powder. I want a little more sparkle, so I die cut the same birch tree die from gold glitter cardstock and trim off the edges so only part of the die is still visible. I layer this behind the black cardstock, allowing the gold to peek through just a tiny bit. Finally, I adhere that to my striped card base to finish the card. I love how it looks like a very modern ombre sunset. And you can use the same trick of adding a second layer of glitter cardstock to my first Christmas card for a little extra sparkle if you'd like. My final card took the longest due to the drying time, but even this card was pretty quick. I die cut the Twirling Flurries cover plate die from Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and blend scattered straw and mustard seed distress oxide ink over the stitched stars using daubers. Then I blast them quickly with my heat gun to set the ink. This helps when you're adding contrasting colors and don't really want them to blend together. For example, I didn't want my blues to mix with the yellow and end up green, so heat setting it helps avoid that. Then I use blending tools to add patches of blueprint sketch wilted violet, chip sapphire, and black soot distress oxide ink across the panel. I kind of followed the designs in the cover plate die with my inks, but not too strictly, and you could add color however you choose.
Once I'm done blending, I splatter the panel with water and then spritz it with shimmer spray. I also add splatters of metallic gold paint to create more stars in my sky. Next, I stamp the spider from Halloween Magic onto a scrap of black cardstock with embossing ink and heat emboss it with silver embossing powder before die cutting it with a coordinating die. I also die cut a second spider to create a little interactive element later. Then I stamp the sentiment from Halloween Magic onto my birch tree panel that's been die cut from black cardstock. I stamp it with embossing ink and then heat emboss it with gold embossing powder. Then I trim down the twirling flurries panel so that more of the yellow is visible. I want my spider to be able to move a little on the card in kind of a sneaky way. Like I don't want to add an action wobbler or something that's really visible. I just want a little movement that will make the recipient wonder if they imagine the movement just for a second or two. A little extra Halloween surprise. So I add score tape to the back of the heat embossed spider and the front of the die cut spider and sandwich a small piece of monofilament clear string in between. Then I add adhesive to the back of the birch tree cover plate die and press the end of the string into the adhesive before adhering the twirling flurries blended panel on top. Finally, I adhere that to a card base to finish the card. Again, the string just lets the spider swing back and forth a tiny bit. And that's it. I love how those two cover plate dies can be used in different ways to create totally different looks. You can find more information over on my blog or in the YouTube description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe, make sure you click the bell so that you're notified the next time I post. Here are a few more videos you might be interested in, and until next time, have an amazing day and happy crafting. Bye!